all of us. Craig McKinley. And, uh, Speaker, I, mean, I can fully understand uh, the lure of the precautionary principle that the government has been faced with, with, with dreadful scenarios and increasing cases and projections. I can understand that lure of let's do this just in case, let's take no chances, and I certainly do not envy the Prime Minister or any of the Quad Group uh, for their decision. But I have a number of concerns that simply cannot be overcome. Let us cast our mind forward to the 2nd of December, because I feel we're going to be here again. What will good enough look like that we can unwind? It took three and a half months last time for us to have a haircut or have our first pint in a pub. What will be the level of daily infections or hospitalisations that are deemed good enough to unwind? Now, I think this is a mistake by the government for not considering what those figures might be, because it would at least give the public something to aim for and something to look forward to. We've got no concept, no data as to what that is likely to be. We're told that this is the last bridge before the cavalry come over the hill, that we have better treatments than we have that vaccine that we're all looking for. But we don't know when that vaccine is going to be ready. We don't know how effective it's going to be. We don't know the time frame over which it can be rolled out across the population. And let us not forget, Madam Deputy Speaker, HIV has been with us for 40 years and we still do not have a vaccine. We have so many clear uh, nonsenses within the regulations. I and many others in this House, I'm sure, are getting emails from gym owners and users. I've had them from people who enjoy outdoor archery. Uh, and obviously the golf situation and a lot from churchgoers. How can it be sensible for a couple to go for a walk on the golf club that they belong to, but they face a fine if they dare do it with a golf club and a ball? And of course, please. Thank my honourable friend for giving way. Has he received, as I have, a letter signed by 1,500 church uh, organisation um, managers and ministers and people of religion opposing these regulations and asking why on earth is the government closing churches in the way that they're doing? It makes, it makes an, I think it has to be an overwhelming number of the responses I've had are from churchgoers and I'll just develop that point very briefly. You know, congregations that go to churches, to synagogues, to mosques, to temples, these are adherent, sensible, disciplined people. To treat them as anything but, I'm afraid, is nothing but an insult. Now, just a few weeks ago, we were offered the tiered system, and that was supported by this House. It was deemed to be the new holy grail that we can look to. And Liverpool, under tier three, seems to be having results. We simply have not given enough time for those opportunities to bed in. But in Kent, in South and in my constituency, we're currently under tier one. What will all this mean to those businesses who've invested heavily in COVID-friendly and, and secure uh, facilities, the businesses and the pubs. We've already seen flip-flopping under the earlish published uh, proposals that off-sales and microbreweries can now continue selling uh, beer uh, outside. Whereas always, the supermarkets could have sold as much as they like. This, I'm afraid, is at the heart of muddled thinking. I want to develop just very briefly what I want to call the Wilkinson's conundrum a great store on every high street. How can it be that they can continue to sell essential and non-essential and yet the independent shop next door that sells just some of that non-essential stuff that Wilkinson can continue to sell will be illegal for them to continue? I'm being asked to spend £50 billion extra today or perhaps even more. There is no data as to what this means on other health issues, there is no assessment of what this means to families not able to see grandchildren or to see off loved ones in their final days. I'm here to make a decision. I will not be abstaining. I'm paid to have a view. And tonight I will be voting against this. I'm sorry. Yeah.